A roux is the foundation of many Cajun recipes, like gumbos and etouffees. It gives the dish its flavor and depth, and can easily be the difference maker in a good or bad meal. Today, I'm going to show you two easy ways to make a roux. For those that aren't familiar, or that have never made one, a roux is the combination of flour and oil that is used to thicken sauces. If you've ever made a bechamel, congrats, you've made a roux. The first technique is the traditional and my favorite way, just oil and flour and a cast iron on the stovetop. And the second is a healthier and easier way using a cookie sheet and your oven. For the stovetop method, you'll need a heavy bottom potter pan. I'm using my cast iron. Heat one cup of vegetable oil over medium high heat. While that is heating, you can get one cup of flour ready to go. You want your oil to be hot enough that it sizzles when you toss in some flour, like this. Now you are ready to add your flour. With one hand, slowly incorporate your flour, a little bit at a time. This helps prevent large clumps. With your other hand, whisk to remove clumps. Be careful not to splash while whisking. A roux is often called Cajun napalm, and any good Louisiana cook is proud to show off their roux burns. As your roux cooks, you'll start to see the flour changing colors, and it'll start to smell similar to toasted bread and kind of nutty. For an etouffee or sauce piquant, you're looking for a color that is similar to peanut butter. So if you're making one of those, you're done now. A lot of people get nervous when they see the roux starting to clump up in this kind of peanut butter stage. Don't worry, keep whisking, keep going. As it gets darker, it will thin back out. After about 13 minutes, you can see that the roux has reached a rich, dark reddish brown color, similar to a Hershey bar. This is exactly what you were looking for. Now that your whole house is smoky and your arm is tired, your roux is done. For a gumbo, this is when you would add in the Cajun Trinity. For the second method, we are going to do a dry roux. This is just flour baked in the oven. Though not traditional, these have become more popular because they are healthier and a little bit easier because they are less prone to burning. For this technique, start by preheating your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Line a cookie sheet with parchment paper and evenly spread out two cups of flour. To help prevent burning, keep the flour away from the edges of the pan, like this. Bake for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, pull out the flour and carefully mix well with a spatula. It will be clumped and unevenly cooked, and that's fine. Try to break up as many clumps as possible and drop it back in the oven for another 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, mix and stir the flour again. I like to lift the parchment paper and bring it all to the center and then even it back out. Now back in the oven, but set your timer for 10 minutes. Continue baking and mixing in 10 minute increments for a total baking time of one hour. The color you are looking for is similar to peanut butter. It won't be near as dark as the stovetop roux, but that is totally fine. The beauty of this method is that the roux is shelf stable in a sealed container. This is perfect for quick Tuesday night gumbos. Here you can see the different shades of color that the flower has taken on at 0, 15, 30, 40, 50, and then finally at 60 minutes. Around the 50 to 60 minute mark, your flower should reach that darker peanut butter color and will now be a great dry roux. Look, I know what you were thinking. That's not a roux, it's too bland looking. And I thought the same thing, but trust me, the roux will darken the second you put it in your pot. I'll prove it. To demonstrate our dry roux, I'm going to make a quick gumbo. I'll saute the Cajun Trinity, onions, bell pepper, and celery, and then sift it in a half a cup of our dry roux. You can see how the roux changed colors the second it hit the pot. It actually resembles the color of our stovetop roux. Now I have added in the chicken stock, and you can see how the roux has thickened up the stock. But this recipe is for another day. I will be releasing two different gumbo videos soon. Stay tuned. Well, there you have it, the tale of two roux. My favorite will always be the OG stovetop method, but the dry roux is great for weeknight meals or if you're trying to eat a little bit healthier. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you are interested in learning more about Cajun, Creole, and Louisiana recipes, subscribe and stay tuned to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See y'all next time.